Africans have never been homosexual. We have never seen homosexual frogs. I have cattle, I've never seen homosexual gay cattle. And homosexuality is, a, is detrimental to human existence. It's un-African, it's unethical, it's ungodly. Go to the Bible and the Quran. I'm a constitutionalist. The current provision in the constitution forbids same-sex marriages and uphold that until that issue in our country is not an issue of the political party. Not same-sex marriage, I'm talking about same-sex, same-sex relationships. Never mind, we can put marriage to self. I'm talking about same sexual activity. In our current constitution, it is banned. Are you going to lead a campaign? No, I will not lead a campaign. Why not? Those people who want that are the people who must uh, canvass for such things so that we know that there could be people who are homosexual in Zambia. But we don't want to promote it because we frown upon it to practice. Most of us say it's wrong. I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it's, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. This is not about Uhuru Kenyatta saying yes or no. This is an issue that the people of Kenya themselves, who have bestowed upon themselves a constitution, right, after several years, have clearly stated that this is not a subject that they are willing to engage in. Yeah. We do not want to create a mountain out of a molehill. This is not a, a big issue for the people of Kenya. When the people, of, when it becomes a big issue for the people of Kenya, the people of Kenya will make a choice. As it is now, we are grappling with five million young people who do not have jobs, four million people who are hungry, and that is my concern. That is the focus of the people of Kenya at the moment. When the issue you have discussed about homosexuality and the rights of LGBT will come, the people of Kenya will make a choice. We equally reject attempts to prescribe new rights that are contrary to our values, norms, traditions, and beliefs. We are not gays. LGBT. Homosexuality. Yes. It hasn't been our problem. Uh, and uh, we don't intend to make it a problem. Let me, in conclusion, stress again that it will not be under the presidency of Nana Adodanko Akufuado that same-sex marriage will be legal. The same-sex marriage will be legalized in Ghana. It will never happen in my time as president. Let me repeat, it will never happen in my time as president. Homosexuality, for example, which I believe is illegal and it's punishable. I mean, why is homosexuality still illegal in your country? Um, these the, the social, cultural issues, if you like. Um, I don't believe that in Ghana so far, a sufficiently strong coalition has emerged, which is having that impact on public opinion that will say, change it. Let's then have a new paradigm in Ghana. Is I that think, something you would get behind? I think, I think that it is something that is bound to happen. 
And when that happens... What's going to provoke it? What's going to make it happen? Oh, it's, it's the activity, like, like, like elsewhere in the world, like elsewhere in the world, the activities of individuals, of groups. I, I, I grew up in England. I went to school as a young boy in England, and I grew up at the time in England when homosexuality was banned there. It was, it was illegal. And I lived a period when uh, British politicians thought it was, it was anathema even to think about... Uh, changing the law, and then suddenly the activities of individuals or groups, uh, a certain awareness, a certain development, grew and grew and grew stronger, and it forced a change in law. I believe that those are the same processes that will bring about changes uh, in, in our situation. Uh, at the moment, I don't feel, I don't see that in Ghana there is that uh, strong current of opinion that is saying this is something that we need even deal with. It's not, it doesn't, it, it, it's not so far a matter which is on the agenda. You were speaking about a modern Africa, and I'm here with the Bay Area Reporter, which is the LGBT newspaper, and for people who don't know what LGBT is, that's the gay and lesbian community. So I'm wondering, you've done so much for women in Rwanda, and they have so much power. I'm wondering, is the LGBT community a part of the future of Rwanda? Well, I, I don't know if I understood what you, you just asked, but I, I, I guess I understand, I have understood that. LGBT. Homosexuality. Yes. It hasn't been our problem. Uh, and we don't intend to make it a problem. So we, we, we are struggling with all kinds of problems we have. And as I said earlier, we want to have everybody involved, participating. <laughs> that means, as I said, being there for each other again it's because we mind being uh, supportive of each other, we mind uh, the stability that comes with allowing people to live in harmony. And I think we've made good progress on that. So this far, since, as I said, that is not uh, a big problem for us, I don't want to make it a problem. On the question of human rights, on the question, for example, of same-sex rights, never mind same-sex marriage or anything like that that might be in the future, for want of a better word, gay rights, the overturning of laws against homosexuality. Can you promise me today that you will do that? I'm a constitutionalist. The current provision in the Constitution forbids same-sex marriages and uphold it until that issue in our country is not an issue of the political party. Not same-sex marriage. I'm talking about same-sex. Same-sex relationships. Never mind. We can put marriage to stuff. I'm talking about same sexual activity. In our current Constitution, it is banned. Are you going to lead a campaign no, I will not lead the campaign. Why not? Those people who want that are the people who must uh, canvass for such things so that if they are able to win majority in amending the Constitution, they would amend it. But it's not my duty on that uh, issue to say I want to campaign for this. No. 
Of course it is. Your, with respect, Mr. President, of course it's your duty. It's your duty to, 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 to uphold human rights as recognised by the United Nations and as recognised by the It is my countries. duty. It's my duty to obey my constitution. Correct. I would not be persuaded to violate my constitution. Currently, my constitution says what I have said. But the constitution does not forbid people with different opinions. They must converse with the opinions which they have. So I'm asking for your opinion, both as a man and as president. Are you in favour of changing the constitution on that issue? No. I am not, it's never a priority in Zimbabwe to deal with that issue. During 2013, when everybody was able to converse, those who conversed for that position lost. We go by the majority view of our people. And currently, the majority view is what I am stating. So you keep Zimbabwe in a different age. In a, never mind same-sex marriage. But in an age when the European Union, the United States, Australia recently uh, enacted same-sex marriage, and pretty much, oh, no, pretty much your country I, I don't is, think that, is in a very small minority. Um, my, I don't think with my priorities today, I would grow my economy, right? Uh, 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 increase the standard of life of my people, putting that as a priority. Our priority now, with my government, is to embrace the international community and uh, say Zimbabwe is open for business. Let uh, uh, people who want to invest in Zimbabwe say this is what they want, these are the constraints they see, and this is what I believe is necessary for us to grow, to catch up with some of the developing countries in our world. One more in our this. region. One more on this. I, would, I, I venture to disagree with you, Mr. President. It is, that's democratic. Surely, by changing, whether it's on women's rights, gay rights, whatever rights it is, human rights, surely by changing those, you really send the true message that you're not just interested in money coming in for dollars for business, but creating an equal environment for all. Surely that's a much more powerful message than just asking for a bit of extra foreign direct investment. It's not a question of having dollars in Zimbabwe. It's a question of development. We must have functional railway systems in my country. We must have functional uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, highways and so on. We must have functional manufacturing sector in the country. I must modernize and mechanize my agriculture in Zimbabwe. I must have a developed uh, mining sector in Zimbabwe. These are the things, as far as I'm concerned, are the issues which my people look at for government to address and uh, uh, facilitate for their development so that we catch up with members of the region. We know that there could be people who are homosexual in Zambia. But we don't want to promote it because we frown upon it to practice. Most of us say it's wrong. It's unbiblical, it's unchristian, and we don't want it. Even animals don't do it. Why should we be forced to do it? Because we want to be seen to be smart, to be seen to be civilized and advanced and so on. If there are such countries which will allow bestiality, let them do it, but not here. One of the major issues, and it's a holdover from sort of colonial Victorian, is the issue of sexual preference in many African countries. In Kenya, to be gay, the LGBT community, is, is illegal. They just want to have equal rights, the same privacy and equality as all other Kenyans do. Is that something that you aspire to for your country? I want to be very clear, uh, 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 there is. I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it's, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. This is not about Uhuru Kenyatta saying yes or no. This is an issue that the people of Kenya themselves 
who have bestowed upon themselves a constitution, right, after several years, have clearly stated that this is not a subject that they are willing to engage in, yeah, at this time and moment. In years to come, possibly long after I'm president, who knows? Maybe our society will have reached a stage where those are issues that people are willing freely and open to discuss. I have to be honest with you. And that is the position that we have always maintained. Those are the laws that we have, and those are laws that are 100% supported by 99% of the Kenyan people, irregardless of where they come from. So, I, I think it's a very you're going to get yourself into trouble. Mm. Because what you've categorically just stated is that this is not an issue for us, for the Kenyan people, yes. and you don't think that the idea of their privacy, their equality, their rights Christian, is important. This is, uh, but it's a global issue it's, right now. It's, it's important to them where they are. Why is it I am important to you that it as is president not of the country? important to me as the leader of 49 million Kenyans and after, if you want to ask me my personal opinion... What is your personal after opinion? After I finish my process, I can talk about my personal opinion. But as the leader of the people of the Republic of Kenya, I, I represent that which our people are desirous to be. And I have no choice, but that is my position. Would you publicly say that people who are LGBT gay members of the Kenyan population should not be discriminated against, should not be violated, should not be abused. All, all, no Kenyan, no Kenyan should be abused, should be, you know, uh, uh, um, mistreated in any particular. Every Kenyan is protected by law, every single Kenyan. But they also must recognize that their freedoms are also must be taken into the entire context of the society that they live in. Because this is not a question of governments accepting or not accepting. This is a question of society, right? C currently, accepting. it's a legal process. Yes. And that legal process is based on the society that you live in, and that's why laws are made. So I think that's all I have. I want to talk to you about a specific, you know, human rights situation in parts of Africa and including in your own country. You yourself gained worldwide attention a few years ago when you said there was, quote, no room for homosexuality in Kenyan society. I want to know whether you still stand by that. We have um, Kenyan law. We have Kenyan constitution. We have our tradition. We have our customs. We will continue to respect other people's customs as they respect our customs and our tradition. I am very clear, I am very clear that we respect everybody and what they believe in, but we also have what we believe in and we expect to be respected for what we believe in. So before I ask you to flesh that out and what exactly does it mean, I want to play you what President Kenyatta said to me about this issue. I will not engage in a subject that is of no... It, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from, this is not acceptable, this is not agreeable. So he's basically saying homosexuality is not agreeable. You've just said that you're kind of trying to thread the needle, that the law says one thing, but you respect everybody's rights. Will a Ruto administration crack down, like many other leaders in Africa, on the homosexual LGBTQ community? Or will you allow them their human rights and their civil rights? I think on that subject, President Kenyatta was spot on. We do not want...
to create a mountain out of a molehill. This is not a, a big issue for the people of Kenya. When, the people of, when it becomes a big issue for the people of Kenya, the people of Kenya will make a choice. As it is now, we are grappling with five million young people who do not have jobs, four million people who are hungry, and that is my concern. That is the focus of the people of Kenya at the moment. When the issue you have discussed about homosexuality and the rights of LGBT will come, the people of Kenya will make a choice, and we will respect the choice of the people of Kenya. For now, Christian Amanpo, let us focus on the real issues that affect our people. As you know, Mr. President, with respect, these are real issues that affect so many people around the world. But we will hold you to what you said, and we'll come back to you um, if, the, if the situation requires it, which no problem. probably it will. We equally reject attempts to prescribe new rights that are contrary to our values, norms, traditions, and beliefs. We are not gays. Cooperation and respect for each other will advance the cause of human rights worldwide. Confrontation, vilification, and double standards will not. Mr. President, self-determination and independence are intrinsic and fundamental rights that should be enjoyed by all peoples everywhere without distinction. We are deeply concerned by the continued denial of this basic right to the Sahara, Sahara, Saharawi people. We urge the United Nations to expeditiously finalize what must be done to conclude the decolonization of the Western Sahara. Africans have never been homosexual. We have never seen homosexual frogs. I have cattle, I've never seen homosexual gay cattle. And homosexuality is, a, is detrimental to human existence. It's on African, it's on ethical, it's on godly. Go to the Bible and the Quran. We are Muslims and we believe in the Almighty Allah and what he says. Whatever Allah says is haram, we will make sure it's haram to the letter. I don't care what they feel about me. I didn't introduce the death penalty here. I found it here. And the British brought the death penalty to the Gambia. Before colonialism, there was no death penalty in Africa. Don't you know that? Go to history. But it's also said now, that... Now who? It is also said, uh -huh. Mr. President, yeah. that it was the colonials who brought in the laws against homosexuality into Africa, and Africans have maintained and kept those laws. So to be truly African would to be to remove those laws forbidding homosexuality and to remove the death are you, penalty. Are you attributing that homosexuality is African? There are some Africans who say so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, in, in the slave trade, doesn't Africans so get captured people in the bush? So those, those are the same type of Africans that we still have that they use against us. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but homosexuality is un-African. And I, let me also make it very clear. Even if the whole world accepts it, I, I, Jambi, will not accept it in the Gambia. They, let them go and tell me whatever they want to tell. Do I care? I don't. What I care about is how Almighty Allah sees me. I'm a Muslim. If I die, none of them can take me to hell or heaven. But it's the Almighty Allah who will take me to wherever he decides. And homosexuality would never be accepted in this country. They can call me any name. Do I care? I don't. Imagine, Mr. President, if you knew somebody, thought they were talented and they were even related to you, and that person presented themselves as a homosexual, said, I can't help it, it's how I was made, would you still condemn them or would you say, I must be merciful, munificent, beneficent? What would you say? In applying the law, I have no relative. I have sworn to the Holy Quran that I will do my duties without fear or favor, ill will or affection.